So, what happened before the Big Bang? Does our universe have an edge? How come we know next to nothing about dark matter and dark energy? What if there are no black holes? Will we ever find the answers to the most intriguing questions about the universe? <laughs> Stay tuned! What if there are no black holes? Most people imagine a black hole to be a starving monster with a gravitational pull so strong that nothing, including light, can escape it. As soon as something reaches the event horizon, aka the point of no return, there's no way back. But then, how about information? Quantum physics, which describes how everything in the world works, claims that nothing can destroy data. But if this nothing includes black holes, well, then we have a paradox on our hands. That's when Stephen Hawking came up with a new idea. Can it be that black holes don't have event horizons? Instead, they may have apparent horizons. Those can only trap stuff for some time. After that, matter or energy will escape, but in a different form. It means that black holes won't be able to wipe information, just change it. If this theory is true and there's no event horizon, then there are no black holes as we know them. Is there going to be a big crunch, a big rip, or a big freeze? Yeah, I know where you can get a big gulp. Many astronomers agree that the universe might end some 2.8 to 22 billion years from now. If the universe is expanding, and it is, it means it was born from a much more compact state, like Rhode Island. And if it does have a beginning, it's likely to come to an end, too. But scientists can agree on the way it'll happen. One of the most popular theories is a big crunch. Not Captain Crunch. Once the growth of the universe slows down to a crawl, the gravity will become the main force. It'll make the universe shrink, causing planets, stars, and galaxies to collide with one another. It'll be the Big Bang in reverse, with everything collapsing in on itself. Then there's also the Big Rip Theory. One day, the pull of the universe expanding may grow stronger than the gravity. It'll tear apart everything in space, even black holes. There will be just clouds of single, disconnected particles floating all over the universe. And let's not forget about the most likely scenario, the Big Freeze. The universe is expanding faster and faster. One day, this growth will pull previously visible galaxies too far away, and we won't ever see them again. Many billions of years later, the universe will turn into a huge, dark, empty, and incredibly cold place with no movement at all. What was there before the Big Bang? In short, no one knows, but there are theories. Most people imagine the Big Bang as some place where everything started. But it's actually not a point, but a moment in time. Before it all happened, the universe could be a super-hot, ultra-dense material. Then the Big Bang would become its main evolution point. Or there could be another universe before the Big Bang. It would be identical to ours, but on the way to its own big crunch. Then the Big Bang could be a switch from the period of shrinking to that of expansion. Even better, the Big Bounce theory claims there could be countless Big Bangs while the universe kept expanding, shrinking, and expanding again. One more idea is that before the Big Bang, there were two separate universes that collapsed and formed the place we live in. What if our universe is just a simulation? Some scientists think there's a chance we're living in some kind of virtual reality. Then our universe could be a giant quantum computer and atoms and electrons, nothing else but data bits. Elon Musk, for example, once said we might live in a simulation created by a super-advanced future civilization. This idea might seem too sci-fi at first glance, but don't forget that even Albert Einstein, in his theory of relativity, admitted time travel was a could-be. If the universe has an edge, what's there beyond it? Astronomers know for sure that the universe is growing bigger, and the speed at which it's ballooning is increasing all the time. But if the whole thing is swelling into something bigger, then it must have some kind of an edge, right? It's unlikely that people will ever find out, but if so, then what would it be? 
A ginormous brick wall and then nothing? An abyss that leads to nowhere? The most common theory is that the universe is shaped in such a way that it can't have an edge. But it's not the only idea. Another theory is even more difficult to comprehend. The universe is indeed infinite. And our part of it isn't that unique. It means that somewhere out there, there's another you. Or rather, other you. One of them is just a bit shorter, another wears their hair in different ways, and a third one is identical to you in all possible ways. Hey, good looking! What if our universe is just a part of multiverse? Oh yeah, there's also a theory about a multi-universe that consists of many smaller universes. And the universe we live in is just a tiny bubble among other similar bubbles. Those scientists who support this idea are also sure that bubble universes can come into contact with one another. Then gravity starts to flow between them, and when two or three universes connect, a big bang occurs, just like the one that created our home universe. What is dark energy? Everything on Earth and everything people have managed to see in space with the help of telescopes and other instruments is normal matter. It's made up of atoms and molecules and adds up to less than 5% of the universe. Almost three quarters of the universe is dark energy. Astronomers wouldn't even know the thing existed if several decades ago they hadn't found out that the expansion of the universe wasn't slowing down. Quite the opposite, it was accelerating. It meant there had to be some enigmatic force that counteracted gravity. It got dubbed dark energy. What does dark matter consist of? About 27% of the remaining universe is dark matter, another thing that confuses scientists to no end. If dark energy is a force responsible for the expansion of the universe, dark matter is supposed to explain how objects work together. Potential candidates for dark matter vary from strange particles to super dim objects. But even though astronomers can't grasp what exactly dark matter is, they know for sure what it isn't. It's dark, meaning we can rule out visible stars and planets. It also can't be dark clouds of normal matter, otherwise scientists would be able to detect it. Dark matter is not antimatter. Astronomers don't see unique gamma rays that appear when antimatter comes in contact with matter. And neither is dark matter gigantic galaxy-sized black holes. Hey, maybe they're gigantic, unwrapped Hershey Kisses floating out there in the cosmos. It could happen. Why is the sun kinda too hot? Or at least, how come the star's outer layer is way hotter than its surface? The sun's temperatures vary from 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit close to the surface and a mind-boggling 900,000 degrees Fahrenheit in the corona, the sun's outermost layer. The reason for this phenomenon might be nanoflares, regular powerful bursts of heat from the star. Another theory blames a layer just beneath the sun's surface. Acting as a pan with boiling water, it may be generating a weak magnetic field. When the energy from this layer leaves the sun, it heats the corona through a mesh of magnetic branches and roots. Are we alone in the universe? There are several hundred billion stars just in our home Milky Way galaxy alone. Imagine the sheer number of planets orbiting these stars. Even better, there may be up to 2 trillion galaxies in the visible universe, which makes it unlikely for people to be all alone in this world. But before drawing conclusions, scientists must find planets that can support life. That's why astronomers keep focused on what's happening up there with the help of powerful telescopes on the ground and in space. For example, TESS, which stands for the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, is doing an all-sky exoplanet search. The Space Observatory is equipped with wide-field cameras. They help the satellite observe 85% of the entire sky. TESS watches the brightest stars trying to spot moving exoplanets from Earth-size to gas giants, like Saturn or Jupiter. Who knows? One day, we just might be able to say, Howdy, neighbor!